On the eve of our engagement, Blake Hector and I were in a car accident. He instinctively held me, which resulted in him getting seriously injured. Everyone said Blake loved me so much that he would risk his life for me. But that night, Blake's first love sent a video. In the video, Blake was passionately kissing her. You should understand, I'm just playing along with her. Later, Blake's first love came to me in tears. Now Blake can't forget about you even in his death. Moira Dalton, stealing someone else's man, aren't you shameless? Dean. This novel reminds you to click the subscribe button in the bottom right corner to read the complete novel. In the hospital room, Blake slept peacefully. The only sound was the ticking of the clock. Tick tock, it inexplicably made people anxious. Five days ago was Blake's birthday, and we were driving to the estate when the accident happened. At the moment the steering wheel lost control, Blake instinctively threw himself over me. A huge roaring sound and the impact followed. When I opened my eyes again, blood from Blake's head was trickling down my neck. We were rushed to the hospital immediately. Because Blake protected me, I only had external injuries and a mild concussion. But Blake wasn't so lucky. He broke an arm and was in surgery for two hours. Blake's parents rushed to the hospital in the middle of the night. Seeing Blake in the state, Mrs. Hector almost fainted from crying. I stood aside with my head down, feeling like a sinner. Mr. and Mrs. Hector, it's all my fault. When the accident happened, Blake chose to protect me first. If it weren't for me, he wouldn't have been so badly injured. Seeing my red and swollen eyes, Mrs. Hector kindly patted my shoulder. Moira, it's not your fault. You are Blake's fiancé, and it's a man's duty to protect you. We won't blame you. I lowered my eyes. Yes. I am Blake's fiancé. Two months ago, he had just proposed to me. Amidst everyone's blessings, I happily agreed to him. Maybe even Blake himself didn't know. I loved him, I loved him many years ago. Back then, Blake had just broken up with his first love and was heartbroken. He spent his days fighting and hanging out in bars, completely desolate. I stayed by his side, helping him through the toughest times. It was also me who would serve him a steaming bowl of noodles when he got off work. At that time, Blake would always gently touch my hair. Moira, you are the most gentle and serene girl I've ever met. I don't know why, but every time I eat the food you make, I feel better. Since then, I, a pampered lady who had never lifted a finger, started cooking for Blake. Later, Blake threw a birthday party for me. He invited his best friends and introduced me as his girlfriend in front of everyone. In my surprised gaze, Blake kissed my cheek. Moira, I think I've fallen for you. At that moment, I burst into tears of joy. I thought, my happiness was finally here. Blake didn't disappoint me. After being with me, he almost became the model of a perfect man. No smoking, no bars, no other women. He responded to everything, reported his whereabouts. Even his friends said Blake was madly in love with me. Only I could control a wild spirit like Blake. These days lasted for three years, we were inseparable. In moments of passion, Blake would even hold my waist. Moira, let's have a baby, okay? I once thought Blake loved me. Even his parents thought so. That's why they urged us to get married and settle down soon. But I didn't expect it. Just yesterday, Blake's first love contacted me. After I finished wiping Blake's body on the hospital bed, my phone rang. A new friend request appeared on the screen. The name Nancy burned into my eyes. It wasn't unfamiliarity, but rather too much familiarity. She was Blake's first love when his heart first blossomed. She was also the one he would rather fight and drink to forget, his unattainable love. Feeling my fingertips tremble slightly, I accepted her friend request. The chat box kept switching between Nancy and the other party is typing. She seemed to be contemplating what to say to me. After a long time, a string of words came through. Miss Dalton, hello, I'm Nancy, Blake's ex-girlfriend. You must be curious about where Blake went on his birthday, right? I think you should watch this video. Immediately following was a 22-second short video. I opened it, and the two people in the video were in an intimate position. Nancy was panting, sitting on Blake's lap, with her shoulders half-exposed. Blake's eyes were full of desire as he pressed the woman beneath him. 
In Nancy's coquettish voice, Blake softly coaxed. Sweetie, why are you jealous of Moira Dalton? You should understand that I'm just putting on an act with her. A woman who doesn't even have any tricks in bed, I've had enough of her long ago. All these years, the only person in my heart has always been you. These seemingly light words. But every word burned me. As he finished speaking, the two seemed to merge into each other's lives. The screen went black at the right time. My fingertips had long gone cold. Blake called her sweetie. And the nickname he always used for me, Moira, had long been replaced with my full name in front of Nancy. The difference in intimacy and affection was clear. I didn't reply to Nancy. Instead, I recalled a few days ago. On Blake's birthday, he called me with a video call in the evening. He looked apologetic and told me that something came up at the company, so we had to postpone his birthday celebration to the next day. I didn't think much of it. I even felt sorry for Blake, having to work overtime on his birthday. When I said I would make a bento and go to the company to accompany him while he worked. Blake looked evasive, seemingly a bit guilty. The weather is too cold, don't go out. If you catch a cold, I'll be heartbroken. At that time, I was still immersed in Blake's sweet words. I didn't realize at all that the man in front of me had long been unfaithful. Looking back now, that night he was with Nancy. I laughed at myself. All these years, no one dared to mention Nancy's name. Afraid of reopening the emotional wounds that Blake had finally healed. He cherished me, holding me in the palm of his hand. Everyone thought he couldn't live without me. I was wrong. Blake had always been thinking about Nancy, from beginning to end. That night, Blake didn't come home. It must have been a reunion of old lovers. Passionate sparks flew. The next day, Blake had dark circles under his eyes. That's why he was driving tired and crashed into another car. The most ridiculous part is. These past few days, I've been living in a state of being moved. Thinking that Blake would even risk his life for me. Blake finally woke up. As usual, I took care of him meticulously. When I was busy, he would grab my hand and say, Moira, since I woke up, you haven't looked at me. Are you blaming me for being careless while driving and getting hurt? I sat down and quietly looked at Blake. Instead of answering, I asked, The day before the accident, did you work all night? Hearing my question, Blake's expression became a bit evasive. Yes, that recent deal made me very stressed. With the year-end approaching, I wanted to earn some money to take you to a foreign island for the new year. Moira, what do you think? I quietly watched Blake's face. His eyes were filled with affection and love. Looking at him for too long could make one sink into his gaze. The wind gently stirred the curtains, bringing a chill. I pulled my coat tighter around me. I was just curious how he could lie so calmly. When facing me, did Blake really feel no guilt? The air became inexplicably quiet. Blake avoided my gaze and pretended to look for his phone on the hospital bed. I took it directly out of the drawer. Handed it to him. When did you change your phone password? Blake's hand paused as he took the phone. Did I? I don't think so. I curved my lips into a smile, but my heart grew colder. Blake rested for more than a month before returning to the company to work. I didn't ask anything. The next afternoon, I took the lunch I had prepared directly to the company. The employees, seeing me, looked a bit uneasy. Miss Dalton, it's been a while since you came to the company. I smiled lightly, yes, I've been busy lately. When I reached the door of Blake's office, I heard a few assistants whispering behind me. That woman clinging to Mr. Hector lately seems quite diligent. If Miss Dalton finds out, Mr. Hector will definitely have to kneel on the washboard. Don't say that, that woman can't compare to Ms. Dalton. Hearing this, I stopped in my tracks. I turned and handed the lunchbox to a young assistant. Help me take this in, don't tell Mr. Hector I came. The young assistant seemed a bit puzzled, Ms. Dalton. Don't ask too much, just do as I say. With that, I turned and went to the restroom. Calmly standing in front of the mirror, I touched up my lipstick. Ten minutes later, I pushed open the door to Blake's office. The playful voices inside sounded somewhat affected. As the door opened, the two people inside were stunned. Seeing me, 
Blake's eyes flashed with panic for a moment. Then, he involuntarily got up to hold me. I subtly avoided his touch. Moira, why are you here? Blake looked at me gently. His eyes swept over the hollow sweater I was wearing, and his face instantly darkened. How many times have I told you not to wear so little just for the sake of beauty? As he spoke, he draped his coat over my shoulders. Behind him, Nancy bit her red lips in grievance. The next second, she pretended nothing was wrong and stepped forward. Moira, long time no see. Seemingly friendly, the smile in Nancy's eyes didn't reach her heart. I nodded at her, when did you return to the country? Nancy glanced shyly at Blake, then said casually. I came back last month, didn't Blake tell you? Well, it's between him and me, no need to tell you. I pressed my lips together, not speaking. Seeing this, Nancy pointed embarrassedly at the empty lunchbox. Sorry, I just got back from a meeting with Blake. I thought it was some takeout, it tasted awful so I threw it all away. Moira, you won't be mad, right? My gaze fell on the coffee table. Blake had eaten from this lunchbox multiple times, so he certainly knew it was from me. So, Blake had tacitly approved of Nancy doing this. My fingertips dug into my flesh, it hurt. The next second, Blake's face showed a hint of displeasure. He looked coldly at Nancy. Who allowed you to touch my lunchbox without permission? Blake could indeed be quite intimidating when he was angry. Nancy's eyes reddened under his scolding. It seemed like she wanted to explain something, but Blake impatiently interrupted her. All right, if there's nothing else, you can leave now. I still need to review the project you proposed. Blake wrapped his arm around my waist and led me towards the sofa. Nancy, however, stood there aggrieved, stubbornly refusing to move. Blake's breathing almost became erratic. After a moment, he eventually gave Nancy a reassuring look. Only then did Nancy reluctantly push the door open and leave. I saw all of this. I took a deep breath and looked at Blake. Nancy is back, why didn't I hear you mention it? Blake laughed lightly and held my hand, seemingly indifferent. Are you angry? I didn't respond. Seeing this, Blake thought I was really jealous. The smile on his lips gradually widened. It's not that I didn't tell you, I just didn't think it was necessary. My interactions with her are purely business, nothing else. If I deliberately told you, what if you overthink it? Blake casually tugged at his tie and pulled me into his arms. My heart gradually sank into an ice cellar. I felt like I could barely breathe. Your mom wants us to visit tonight, don't forget. I know, I'll come pick you up after work. Wait for me at home, all right? Blake gently played with my hair, his lips brushing against my smooth neck. He kissed his way up my neck, his breath heavy with desire. Just as he was about to kiss me, I pressed my hand against his lips. Focus on your work, I'm leaving now. Blake was caught off guard. Seeing me grab my bag and leave, he hurriedly got up to see me off. I'll have the driver take you home. I don't feel at ease with you going alone. You see, Blake is always like this. In every word and action, he takes care of me meticulously, making me gradually rely on him until I can't live without him. I turned and smiled. No need, I have plans with a friend this afternoon. Just as I stepped out of the building, I saw Nancy standing at the entrance waiting for me. Want to grab a coffee? She initiated the conversation, completely devoid of the enthusiasm she had shown upstairs. Of course, Blake wasn't around. Nancy didn't even bother to pretend anymore. In the quiet cafe, Nancy stirred the Americano in front of her with her head down. She looked up at me, a flash of resentment in her eyes. Honestly, I'm quite curious. How can someone with such a different taste from Blake stay by his side for so many years? Moira Dalton, you've always had men chasing after you. But I only have Blake. Can you give me back my Blake? She put a lot of emphasis on the words my Blake. I lowered my eyes to look at the caramel macchiato in front of me. I remembered when Blake and I first got together. He always had a preference for bitter tastes, never adding milk or sugar to his Americano. Every time we went out for coffee, Blake would always tease me. Our Moira loves sweet things so much. One look and you can tell she's going to live a blessed life in the future. 
We would joke and play around. In the end, Blake would always pull me into his arms. Seeing no one around, he would give me a hard pack on the lips. All right, all right, I surrender. At those times, my heart would feel as sweet as honey. Blake and I used to be very much in love. But now. I took a sip of the coffee in front of me and then looked at Nancy. What are you trying to say? Her eyes were full of jealousy towards me, and she spoke with a stiff neck. Don't think I don't know what's on your mind. You've liked Blake since high school, haven't you? It's just that back then, I was with him, and he only had eyes for me. You finally got your chance when we broke up. So, during the time I was away, you used your feminine wiles to climb up, almost becoming Mrs. Hector. But Moira, do you really think Blake loves you? My fingertips tightened unconsciously. Does Blake really love me? Even I don't dare to be sure of the answer to that question. But there's one thing I've always remembered. Once, I had planned to go hiking with friends but got separated from them midway. I had no cash on me, and my phone was dead. On the mountain without any lights, I sat on a rock all night. It was cold, and I was sleepy. But I didn't dare to fall asleep. In the end, I couldn't hold on and fell asleep leaning against a tree. At dawn, Blake found me, his face full of exhaustion. He had various scrapes on his face, arms, and legs. The moment he saw me, Blake's eyes instantly turned red. He took off his trench coat and draped it over me. Then, he pulled me into his arms. That embrace was so heavy, so heavy. Heavy as if he wanted to merge me into his life. Blake's voice trembled with fear. Since last night, they called and said they couldn't find you, and I panicked, completely lost, and rushed out to look for you. But this mountain is too big, and it's hard to move around at night. Thank goodness, thank goodness I finally found you. Moira, you scared me to death. If something had happened to you, what would I do? That was the first time Blake cried for me. He cried like a child, holding me tightly. At that moment, my heart softened completely. I thought, Blake once truly loved me. It's just that this love can also deteriorate over time. Memories are beautiful. What's not beautiful is the people in the present. I looked at Nancy. Are you trying to say that Blake truly loves you? Of course he does. The video I sent you last time wasn't enough to prove everything? Nancy looked at me with a condescending attitude. If you're still not giving up, then why don't we make a bet? Blake told me he's going to take you to meet his mother tonight. Do you think if I ask him to stay now, would he still go with you tonight? Nancy's lips curled into a confident smile. My eyes flickered. Rather than saying I'm not giving up. It's more like Nancy has always wanted to prove her place in Blake's heart. Women in love are gamblers with red eyes. For a man's little bit of affection, they can fight to the death. She believes she is the only one in Blake's heart. Those who are favored naturally have nothing to fear. Unfortunately, I don't lack love. Nor do I lack Blake's now dirty love. No, if you want Blake, then take him. What I don't want, you treat as a treasure. Then hold on to it well, don't end up with nothing. I stood up to leave. Nancy, however, seemed to be struck at her weak spot and became furious. Moira Dalton, you used to be so arrogant, looking down on everyone. Now that I've taken your man, can you still be arrogant? Tell me, what do you have to rely on? I turned back to look at her. I rely on my ability to let go. I've seen many mistresses like you who ruin relationships. Just like grasshoppers after autumn, you won't last long. Nancy, take care of yourself. With that, I turned and left without looking back. The bone-chilling wind blew past, but it wasn't as cold as my heart. At six in the evening, I received a call from Blake. He said he had a last-minute engagement tonight and had to accompany a client for dinner. Such a clumsy excuse, I had already anticipated. I didn't expose him. I just responded lightly and reminded him to drink less. At 6.30, Nancy's message came through. She didn't say anything, just sent me a location. I knew what she meant. Catching them in the act, she was declaring her sovereignty to me, the official girlfriend. I sat quietly on the sofa for a long time before picking up the car keys and driving out. 
The location Nancy gave me was a villa not far from the city center. Blake had chosen this house back then. He liked it at first sight and bought it. Now, it has become the place where he and Nancy secretly meet. I lowered the brim of my hat and sat in the car. Then, I watched as Blake's car stopped at the villa entrance. Nancy was waiting at the door. Long legs stepped out of the car, and Nancy jumped onto Blake. They kissed passionately in front of me. Like lovers in the heat of romance. Nancy giggled. Aren't you afraid Moira will be mad if you don't take her home? Blake kissed Nancy's collarbone, his voice muffled. She's so dull, she wouldn't even suspect a thing. Even if she gets mad, as long as I beckon, she'll come running back. Don't worry, Moira is the most obedient dog by my side. With that, Nancy snickered. Blake lifted Nancy's hips and carried her into the villa. The light on the second floor suddenly turned on, and two intertwined shadows appeared at the floor-to-ceiling window. Soon, the light went out again. I knew Nancy asked that on purpose. She just wanted to make me retreat in defeat. I sat in the car for a long time, letting the cold wind blow in through the window. My heart was also blown open by the wind, a hole that could never be mended. Not wanting to go home, I simply found a hotel and slept until everything went dark. When I woke up at noon the next day, Blake was searching everywhere for me. I called him and said I'd be home in the afternoon, then hung up swiftly. When I got home, Blake was there for once. By the sofa, Blake squatted in front of me. He sounded anxious. Moira, what's wrong? Why did you suddenly disappear last night? I was so worried I almost called the police. I chuckled softly. Really? Last night, he had someone warm and soft in his arms, and yet he still thought of me. I looked steadily at Blake, my expression calm, I know everything. Hearing this, Blake's face changed slightly. He smiled and held my hand. Moira, what are you talking about? Before he could finish, I interrupted him. You and Nancy. Everything, all of it, I know. I have a pretty good idea of what happened and when it started. Blake's eyes quickly filled with a hint of panic. Haven't I explained it to you? It's not what you think between us. Really? And this? How do you explain this? With that, I played the video Nancy had sent me. Blake watched the footage frame by frame, his forced smile gradually fading. Those cruel words resurfaced. Sweetie, why are you jealous of Moira Dalton? You should understand that I'm just putting on an act with her. A woman who doesn't even have any tricks in bed, I've had enough of her long ago. All these years, the only person in my heart has always been you. As I listened, my tears became uncontrollable. Blake, so you've had enough of me for a long time. Then why didn't you say so earlier? Why did you propose to me? What did I do wrong for you to treat me like this? Seeing my tear-streaked face, Blake frantically held my hand. Moira, listen to me. These were just stupid things I said to Nancy. You know, you can't take things said in bed seriously. She was just a fling, I never had feelings for her. You know the only person I love is you, right? Don't be mad at me, forgive me this once, please. I really can't live without you. Large tears fell from Blake's eyes, landing on his hand. At this point, I only felt disgusted. I violently shook off Blake's hand. Forgive you? What about me? Blake, when you were sleeping with her and lying to me about working late, did you ever feel guilty? When you held her and called me the most loyal dog by your side, did you ever regret it? When you shielded her from drinks, did you ever think of me, who used to shield you during the early days of your business? Did you ever feel any pity for me? No, you didn't. So, why should I forgive you? Emotionally shattered, I cried hysterically. Blake trembled as he knelt before me. His lips tightened, but he still desperately tried to hold me. Moira, please don't do this. It's all my fault, I didn't keep my boundaries. You can hit me, scold me, whatever you want, just don't leave me, okay? I promise you, I'll break it off with her. From now on, there will only be you, okay? Stop crying, I really was wrong. I struggled continuously in Blake's arms, but he stubbornly held me tighter. I suddenly remembered a passage from a book named To Live. 
he will beg you, he might even kneel, and he might slap himself, but don't soften. He will swear again and again, men love to swear, their promises are no different from a dog's bark, don't believe them. I had given Blake a chance. Every time I asked him, he had a chance to confess. But he didn't. He gave up on his own. I wiped away my tears and used all my strength to push him away. Blake, you're really filthy. Why did you make yourself so dirty? I really don't want you anymore. Now, even staying in the same space with you is unbearable. Let's break up. With that, I got up to leave. Blake grabbed me, tears and snot mingling on his face. I initially liked him purely because he was handsome. Now, I see he's no different from anyone else. I let out a bitter laugh. Love's gaze can gild the other with a golden edge. I should have realized sooner that Blake is just an ordinary person like everyone else. He looked at me with red eyes. Give me some time, I promise I can sort this out. I brushed off Blake's hand. I don't believe a word you say. Please, please, don't ever come to bother me again. That day, after I moved out of Blake's house, I never went back. Years ago, when he was preparing to start his business, I took out the money my parents gave me for a car. I invested my own money into his company. To fully support him, I acted as both investor and fiancé. I accompanied Blake to all social engagements. He's allergic to alcohol, so he can't drink. So, I always stood in front of Blake, apologizing to others with a smile. Whenever that happened, Blake would always hold my hand. I'm sorry you have to go through this, I promise I won't let you work this hard in the future. But just a few days ago, I smelled alcohol on Blake. I asked several assistants and employees from the business department. They all said that Nancy accompanied him to that engagement. So, he was willing to risk his alcohol allergy to shield her from drinking? That night, I sat quietly on the sofa, letting my tears flow freely. The next day, I pretended nothing had happened. I told him, you're allergic, remember to apply the medicine. What Blake never knew was, when he praised my cooking, I hired a chef to come to our home to teach me. During that time, my hands often had cuts from the knife. All from cooking. When Blake saw them, he would always tenderly apply medicine for me. He would remind me to be careful. But he never said, stop doing it, I'll do it. It seemed like Blake wasn't oblivious to my efforts. He silently enjoyed my goodness, my meticulous care for him. I admit my judgment was terrible. To have invested so many years in someone like this. Giving both money and effort, only to end up like this. I chose this path, so I accept it. Even if I have to swallow my blood in tears. One must always take responsibility for their own choices. My parents were so angry when they heard about what happened between Blake and me that they didn't sleep well for several days. Even Blake's mother came to see me. This middle-aged woman almost begged me in a low voice. She begged me to go back to her son. Moira, I know it's my son's fault, but I promise to discipline him well this time. But please, for my sake, just forgive him this once, okay? Blake really loves you. During this time, I've watched him become so depressed that he doesn't even go to the company. If you're not by his side, he'll really lose his life. Please, as a favor to me, okay? I sighed softly. Mrs. Hector, because Blake is your son, you worry about him. But in this situation, my parents are also very heartbroken for me. I can understand your feelings as a parent. But going back to Blake, I'm afraid I can't do that. That day, Blake's mother cried for a long time with tears in her eyes. In the end, she still nodded. It's just his bad luck. Actually, I knew more or less about Blake not going to the company. Ever since I left, Blake seemed to have lost his backbone. He spent his days getting drunk and clubbing, feeling depressed. More than one of his friends called me. Some asked about the situation, some apologized on Blake's behalf. I didn't accept any of it. I just calmly told them. Blake and I broke up, and it's his fault. If you're here to persuade me to get back together, then save your breath. Isn't he acting the same way he did after breaking up with Nancy? Acting like he can't go on, as if he's the victim. Unfortunately, I won't soften my heart again. 
My dad has been working hard in the business world for many years, and I've always been his only daughter. Naturally, all his assets were to be left to me. Later, when Blake and I were in love and planning to get married, my dad was already planning to hand over most of his business to Blake. Even if he was somewhat weak, my dad could still accept him because of his love for me. Reaching this point, I suddenly felt a bit fortunate. Blake and I hadn't gotten to the point of needing to divide assets. After getting myself together, I officially took over the Dalton family company. Half a month later, several old employees from Blake's company came to see me. Seeing them, I felt a bit dazed. What did Blake say about you coming to me? Poaching his entire team would essentially cut off Blake's lifeline. What could he say? He must have realized it himself. They all sighed. One of the technical experts told me. Blake had been seriously ill recently and was recuperating at home. Now the company is being managed by Nancy. She has no business acumen at all. She can't even understand contracts, let alone manage a company. She signs off on things blindly without consulting anyone knowledgeable. And that's not all, she meddles in every little thing in the company. Despite not understanding, she puts on the airs of a boss's wife to suppress others. Over time, everyone has had some complaints. But when these issues were reported to Blake, there was no response. He just said to follow Nancy's arrangements. This completely disheartened the old employees. They had been with us since the early days of the startup. Seeing Blake so indifferent to the company's fate, they wanted to come out and work with me. After understanding the situation, I nodded. Since you trust me, I won't let you down. Everyone will get a raise based on their original salary, and there will be bonuses at the end of the year. Seeing the joy on everyone's faces, I believed that my new life was about to begin. Without Blake, I would only live better. The next time I saw Blake was downstairs at my place. He looked much more haggard than before, leaning against his car waiting for me. When he saw me coming, Blake extinguished his cigarette. I pretended not to see him and walked straight to the elevator in the complex. As I passed by him, he suddenly grabbed my arm. Moira, can we talk? I looked up at him. We have nothing to talk about. Mr. Hector, please let go of me. Hearing me address him like that, a trace of madness flashed in Blake's eyes. He suddenly hugged me and pressed me against the car. At the moment his thin lips pressed down, I slapped him hard. The air instantly became quiet. Blake's face was slapped to the side. Blake Hector, are you crazy? We've already broken up, do you understand? If you keep this up, I'll sue you for sexual harassment. Tears streamed down his cheeks, and he looked at me with red eyes. Can we really not start over? I responded with a question, what do you think? Hearing this, Blake suddenly laughed self-deprecatingly. I thought that as long as I completely gave up the company's future, you would soften and come back to me. After all, we built this company together, you wouldn't really bear to see it collapse. But I was wrong, no matter what I do, you won't look at me again. Moira, we really can't go back, can we? Tears gently slid from his eyes to the corner of his mouth. He looked at me longingly, as if looking at his most cherished lover. I suddenly found it very ridiculous. If he really loved me as he said, then why did Nancy appear? Blake, when you were with me before, all you could think about was Nancy. Now, you've finally gotten what you wanted, made up for the regret of your past first love. So, you start to miss me again, right? People like you will never understand the word loyalty. You always yearn for what you can't have, and once you get it, you never cherish it. In fact, I should have understood long ago, you don't love anyone. You love yourself, from beginning to end. You love that feeling of freshness, love having someone around to take care of you. You acted so deeply in love that even you believed it in the end. Should I say you are pathetic or pitiful? I looked at him, only feeling that everything was the same, yet different. His eyes revealed a hint of heaviness and bitterness. As if the sorrows and pains of life could not be erased. I turned and left, leaving Blake still standing there. After a long time, I heard his voice behind me. Moira, I'm sorry. Yes, this apology came too late. He should have said it long ago. When the flowers bloomed in spring, our company landed a big contract. 
I organized a company outing for everyone. On the way, I saw Nancy and Blake arguing. Both of them looked much thinner than before, and I almost didn't recognize them. People on the bus were already gossiping. Isn't that Blake Hector, the boss of the Hector group? I heard the woman next to him is his first love, but things have been pretty ugly lately. The employees were chattering away, and I got the gist of it. It turns out that a few months ago, Nancy got pregnant with Blake's child. To ensure better care for Nancy and the child, Blake brought her home. Unexpectedly, Blake's mother couldn't stand Nancy. Not only did she not take care of her, but she also insisted that Blake take Nancy to get an abortion. Nancy refused, leading to a confrontation between the two sides. During a scuffle, Blake's mother and Nancy both fell down the stairs. Nancy started bleeding on the spot, and naturally, the child couldn't be saved. Blake's mother fared even worse, ending up paralyzed from the waist down. The hefty medical and surgery bills left Blake struggling to breathe. Coupled with his already faltering company, Blake was deep in debt. He shut down the company and started doing manual labor at a construction site. Without the child, Nancy felt even more insecure, and the two argued every few days. Poverty brings sorrow to couples. I sat on the bus, calmly watching the two of them arguing by the roadside. Driver, speed up. I wasn't interested in Blake and Nancy's current life. They were adults. People have to pay for the choices they make. But I didn't expect Nancy to cause a scene at my company three days later. I was in a meeting at the time. The security guard said someone was causing a ruckus at the front desk, demanding to see me. When I went downstairs, Nancy was giving our receptionist a hard time. As soon as she saw me, Nancy tried to hit me. But the security guard restrained her. She furrowed her brows tightly, her tone resentful. Moira Dalton, you really have a way with things. Even after all this time apart, Blake still can't forget you. He even calls your name in his sleep. Why? Why did I lose a child for him, and he doesn't care at all? Instead, he blames me for fighting with that old woman and causing her to end up like this. That old woman deserved to die. She wanted to kill my child, so she had to pay the price. Nancy's tears streamed down her face, her emotions extremely agitated. I didn't say anything, just quietly watched her. Seeing my reaction, Nancy's eyes were like daggers. Do you know? I hate your arrogant look the most, as if you were born a princess. Now it's great, Blake can't forget you even if he dies. Are you proud of yourself, feeling like you've won? Moira, aren't you shameless for stealing someone else's man? After she finished speaking, I found it amusing. The grudges between you and the Hector family have nothing to do with me. Secondly, you said I stole your man. Are you talking about Blake Hector? Let me tell you, even if you offered him to me now, I'd still find him dirty. With that, I turned and left. Behind me, Nancy's curses were unbearably harsh. Two years later, I had my own family. My husband treated me very well. He was calm and responsible when things happened, and he could tolerate my little temper. My parents were also very relieved about the son-in-law. As for Blake and Nancy, I heard about their recent situation from the news. Since coming to my place and causing a scene, Nancy started to resent Blake. She thought he was useless. To meet wealthy people, Nancy began indulging in a life of luxury. She went to different bars and parties with various people every day. She dressed flamboyantly and never returned home at night. Although Blake no longer loved Nancy, as a man, he still had his dignity. One time, they ran into each other at a bar. Nancy was in another man's arms, kissing passionately. Blake, humiliated, went up to confront them with a furious look on his face. In the bar's chaotic atmosphere, a fight broke out somehow. In the struggle, Blake smashed a bottle on the man's head. The man died on the spot. Seeing her lover killed, Nancy tried to flee in panic. Unexpectedly, Blake, blinded by rage, pulled her back and slit her throat with a broken bottle. This shocking incident caused quite a stir in the city. Watching the news about Blake being arrested by the police, I sighed softly. Beside me, my husband suddenly pulled me into his arms. Don't watch. Watching too many criminals like this will give you nightmares. I smiled and nodded. That night, I dreamed of Blake from high school. 
a 16 or 17 year old boy, wearing a clean, faded cotton t-shirt, with a handsome face and a tall figure, stood in the light and shadow looking at me. As the wind blew, the wild grass stretched to the sky. I wondered if the teenage Blake would blame the 30-year-old Blake for leading himself step by step to a dead end. When I woke up from the dream, my sleeping husband instinctively held me. Moira, don't be afraid, I will always be by your side. Fortunately, I met my true love. I smiled and kissed his forehead. I will too. I will always, always be by your side.